I'm sitting uh, in... Uh, where am I again? I'm in Hampstead. Hampstead, yes. Lauren's house. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sitting in Hampstead with uh, Gabby Young. Hello. Hello, how are you doing, Ben? I'm very well, thank you. Um, is, is, is this somewhere around the area that you're, you're now living and based in London? Yeah, I'm just over the heath, actually. I'm, I'm just at my publicist's house, but mine is a very messy house just over the heath. <laughs> but you come from um, Bath originally, is that right? Yeah, well, I come from Wiltshire. I was born in Bath, and it's quite funny because whenever I do, um, you know, foreign translations, it always says I was born in a Bath. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't. I was born in Bath, and I'm a Wiltshire lass, born and bred. Um, what, what was the appeal of London? Where, where the roads are paved with gold? Yeah, I think it was because, you know, I've wanted to be a singer for so long, so the moment I could get out of uh, being a, a Wiltshire girl and, and move to the big city, and, you know, it's the kind of dream of a girl... Uh, who wants to paint, be a big star. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I kind of moved at 18 with that in mind and stayed there for a year and then was like, actually, I'm going to go some other places. And I went to Manchester for a bit, I went back to Wiltshire for a bit. And it wasn't until I kind of, my life got turned upside down when I got thyroid cancer uh, that I suddenly realised, no, I've got to stick with the London and, uh, and get some musicians that I want to work with and, and start a proper band, so yeah. Uh, and you you were classically trained? Did you train train um, with opera? Is that right? Yeah, I was uh, I was kind of at a musical theatre college for a bit, and I trained to be an opera singer because I've always wanted to go against the grain, and everyone was doing musical theatre. And I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm going to go to opera. Um, but it's such a it's such a strong discipline, and it's it's quite terrifying how much you have to just you know completely put your life into it. And uh, although I do that for music anyway, it was kind of the notes on the page that started to scare me because I wanted to write them myself, you know. So, um, but I still love opera and I kind of wish, I, I hope I can go on to that after. You know, that would be an amazing end to my career, so yeah. Ba -ba -ba! called Sour and uh, apart from the lyrics I'm kind of proud of it but um, I <laughs> I've wondered whether to change the lyrics but I've got to be true to myself and that was what I felt at that time and you know I was 18 and naive. <laughs> and, and, and do you think your, how has your songwriting developed uh, between then and now kind of thing? I hope it has. Um, I definitely think the lyrics have become a bit more, more mature and um, I don't know I think you know I've been through quite a bit since so um i've got a lot more to write about and a lot of my songs are autobiographical and i'm um i'm just um i think as you grow up you start to kind of filter what you find really interesting and then that's when the songs start to become about things that really matter to you and really kind of i feel passionate about and um yeah and also other 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 artists and other types of music have kind of influenced the way that I write a song and that's kind of happened gradually as well so as I get into world music and more jazz um, that's that's kind of helped the songwriting process along. When you perform live uh, and when you perform live at the bar can you, you, you perform with a, with, with a full band? Uh, the, other, the, other, the other, other animals, yeah. Other animals. Um, did you then, as you said you went to musical theatre, was there a distinct um, did you deliberately think I want to create something that's just so engaging on stage? Yeah, I've always thought the visual element is really important. I've never wanted to add um, a musician that I don't feel is like going to really you know, add to my music. So I would be writing a little song on the guitar and go, oh, I can hear a trumpet part, and then there's a trombone, and then, you know, and so that's how people came into our band, and suddenly there were eight of us, and I was like, oh, right, okay. Um, and uh, But I love, I love having them all on stage, and when we're all kind of, you know, properly playing our hearts out, it's, it's kind of like one of those big, jazz bands of the 30s we kind of try and bring that to to uh, to the audience and um we like to get everyone included we get them to sing and you know dance along and everything and uh and i think that's that's really important because we're all about trying to kind of you know stop the the barrier between the audience and and the artist and, and get everyone involved and i think that 
that the visual element kind of helps that along because you become another character. It's like acting, really. You know, you're wearing a costume and, and you can be whoever you want to be. So, yeah. You're like the male version of me Caught in this dream of continuous sleep And I never told you what you happened to me Perfect for me You're perfect for me Like. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a book called uh, My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Durrell and that was the kind of thinking behind it because it was a really uh, one of my favourite books growing up and you know trying to find a band name is hard enough and I saw this book and I was like that's it, Gabby Young and Other Animals, so yeah. <laughs> um, you, you were uh, a, a little pressure on you but you were one of the taunted, taunted, um, touted as one of the big things <laughs> of uh, 2010 last year. Right. Uh, there seems to be a lot of pressure on when people start naming you in lists. Yeah, I know, because it's 2011 now, Ben. Ah! Um, yeah, I mean, that was to be, it was just such an honour for me, because it was the Guardian uh, list of who are not being um, pointed out, but should be, which is really amazing for me, because, you know, uh, we're definitely doing things differently. We're an independent label. We're, we're trying to do everything DIY, you know, and collaborating with wonderful people. So we don't get the same head start that people do with, with major labels. And um, so I'm, I'm really proud to be part of that. That's fantastic for me. And, and you, um, you, you kind of found, found your feet live-wise. You played a lot of the festivals over last summer. Did, was, was that fun? Did, was that a real experience on learning what you and the band was about? Yeah, it was a great bonding experience. We did 15 festivals and there was one with three in one weekend and it was like Holland to WOMAD to Secret Garden Party and by the end we were like, okay, now we really know each other. Um, but I, I mean, I have to say, it sounds like I'm being a cliche, but I really have the best band. We're all, like, there's no egos, there's no trouble, that we just get on with it and get on with each other and... Uh, there's a lot of love in that band. <laughs> so uh, I presume the Barbican stage is one that you've always had a secret desire to play on, uh, you know, whether opera singing or, or, or elsewhere, elsewise, yeah, elsewise uh, or, or for other reasons. Um, you, you looking forward to it? Yeah, I've actually played there before. Well, I sang there before with Al Stewart um, about four years ago because um, I met Al Stewart out in LA and whenever he comes to the UK, he's like, come on on stage so I sang some backing with him um, and that was such a rush I mean that was the first time I'd ever sit on a big stage and you know sang so that was the, the I can't wait to go back there I can't believe I'm doing it again it's all very exciting and especially as it's my music now and I get to bring my band and we've got a brass band playing as well so